My name's Richard. I play the piano. I spent about four months working on um, Brian Fernieho's Lemma Icon epigram um, towards a recording for the BBC. It was this kind of insane piece which I'd, I said yes to doing, thinking I'd, it's good to take on a big challenge. Um, and then at first I thought, what have I let myself in for here? My first instinct was, oh, this is so complicated that you can never get it right and he clearly doesn't expect you to get it right. Um, but talking to people about his um, kind of ways of working and um, reading about him and the kind of performance directions he wrote, I realised he really does want you to try your absolute hardest to get there. Um, in fact, I remember a, an interview with him where he said, um, why should the orchestra be able to just sit down, plonk their bums on their seats and, and play it straight away? I have to work really hard to write the piece, they should have to work really hard to play it. So I was there with a calculator and a ruler <laughs> at some point, trying to work out how everything fits together, um, and then slowly kind of just building it up from nothing, and you almost have to relearn your concept of how one hand works with another, how you count, how you decipher what's on the page. Um, kind of extraordinary experience, but it was it was great. It was not something I would want to be doing constantly, but um, to learn a piece like that every now and again, I think it's it's good for your health. <laughs> I actually got to play it to um, Fernie Howell, the composer, which is was a, a great experience because his time's obviously um, very valuable and he doesn't have um, endless amounts of it. Um, so um, that was a great experience, and then I, I recorded it for them as well, and I was delighted with the results, actually. It was a funny recording because I'd worked so hard. I, It was this insanely difficult piece, as I say, but um, it went really well, and we got it in nearly one take, and so I'm extremely proud of <laughs> that recording. Certainly the um, sophistication is important, and something that's um, kind of meaningful often has um, great complexity within it. But the kind of outcome might be something very simple. And I think it's, it's great when those two things um, come together, especially as a performer, because essentially you work out the intricacies um, in the practice room and um, at home working on a piece day after day. Uh, but then in the concert, you want to communicate something quite direct. You know, it might be a, a simple gesture that might be quite complicated within it, but you have to have the two in balance. And to be honest, I always like it when I feel that um, there's something that an audience can get out of it, um, hearing it perhaps for the first time. Um, and I feel like it's my job to try and help them to do that. So if it's complex just for the sake of being that, I think it's unlikely that, the, that an audience will be able to have that reaction. Um, but if it's there for the right reasons, um, I, 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 it can be fascinating to try and unpick it um, and um, get to the bottom of it. I started playing while I was at, in primary school, and then um, I, I was quite fortunate, actually, um, with how it all worked out. I went to um, the local music shop where my parents went and asked was there anyone could teach me piano there. Um, they didn't actually have any piano teachers available. They had a guitar teacher who played a bit of piano um, and, and that was always available. Um, but he took me on and gave me the greatest start, great musical training, but also said, look, he's really serious about the piano and I should pass him on. And then he passed me on to someone Ian Buckle, um, who was far, far beyond anyone I would have studied with otherwise at that time. And that kind of quite suddenly made me take it very seriously. And I was studying with a top-notch teacher um, and I, it kind of went from there. I'd say especially there's a connection um, between Hitchcock and, and making music. I think he was such a, a kind of control freak um, about the whole way the, the film worked. Um, it's rather like a, a composer might be. Um, and then, and in a sense, his actors are the 
the performers he's trying to kind of control. Um, but I just love his kind of craftsmanship um, and the, all the detail that he puts into the, into the films. I don't feel the same um, attention to detail in, in Woody Allen. Um, I guess I like that because of the, the total opposite. They're really kind of relaxed in the way that he makes them, puts them together. He's, he makes so many. Um, they can be a bit hit or miss, I think everyone would agree on that. Uh, but I like that as well. And there's, there's so much conversation in them and um, people worried about small problems and, and big problems as well. That's, I think it's very much like the life you end up with as a, um, as a performer and a musician. I think the first thing that attracted me um, about contemporary music was the kind of mystery of it. Um, I could see that not everybody um, would like it and it's sometimes so um, fantastically complicated. Um, you, um, you don't know what the, the way in is going to be. I mean, some of the first things I learned were the Ligeti Etudes and they have real rhythmic um, kind of intricacy and that appealed to me, would I be able to do it? Would it can anybody um, cope with it? And once you hear um, that other people can do it, you want to try and do it for yourself. And you can also feel, a, this is just a personal thing, but because it's not everyone's cup of tea, you feel it's more um, important that you um, commit to it um, and do it well. It's not like you don't feel like there are a million other pianists around the world all learning this music, especially when it's a brand new piece. Um, you might be the only person who plays the piece ever. Um, and that gives you a different feeling and, about your work and, and what you're doing. You're, it, it's, it can feel a bit kind of, well, as I said before, a bit healthier. Um, it's not, um, you're not just adding to the, like, this huge, pile and the weight of history of people's recordings of pieces. Um, you're doing something brand new and I don't personally see why anyone would not be interested in, um, anyone wouldn't be interested in that um, because we live here and now, why, why not play the music of here and now? I guess my favourite um, living musician um, is Thomas Adez, um, who um, He's just an amazing pianist and composer, and it's just kind of ridiculous what he can do, I think. Um, but um, so that's a big, um, it's, it's an inspiration, but also it's kind of um, frustrating, you know, there's someone so good out there. And it also that's the gamble people are taking, really, by coming to a live concert. You know, they, they want live music. In, in a sense, it's the, the danger that um, things might go really well, or they might go really badly. Thankfully, things have never gone really badly, but it, you know that the danger's there, and that's actually part of the, of the experience and why it's uh, kind of vital. Actually, I like looking back on it. It's, it's sometimes really hard, um, and you're, of course, totally not satisfied with any of it, um, but you can listen in, in different ways. Sometimes you just try and imagine that it's um, somebody else's recording pieces you don't really know. And then you think, oh yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. Um, but also to be um, really critical of it, I think it's, it's important. And it's, um, whenever you get the chance to hear yourself back, it's a, a great um, lesson, actually. Um, I think Rubinstein si said that, actually, that he went in the re recording studio um, and he said, and now I've had my piano lesson. Because um, you hear yourself back and you think, oh God, is that what I, I do? And some of it's a nice surprise, some of it's um, a nasty surprise. <laughs>